Hey guys, welcome to the build show from my house. That's right, I moved in about six weeks ago. This is the real rebuild project. And in this video, we're gonna be talking specifically about six ways that you can reduce the potential for both leaks and flood in your kitchen, specifically your kitchen sink area. Now we made some other videos in the construction phase that I wanna mention where we did a dishwasher pan and a drain system underneath my dishwasher. We also did one with a drain underneath my washer and dryer and underneath my Miele refridge and freezer, I did a pan so that we could push that water to the front if there was a leak so you could see it. But today's video is specifically about the kitchen sink. I've got six tips for you here at this area that are really gonna help. Today's build show is sponsored by Kohler. Let's get going. All right guys, first tip, quality fixtures. This is a sponsored video from Kohler for a reason because I reached out to them and said, hey, I'm building a new house and I've messed around with lesser brands and even knockoff brands when I was trying to be budget conscious and I've had nothing but problems with those. So I only wanted high quality Kohler fixtures in my whole house. But here in the kitchen sink, your kitchen sink is probably your most used fixture in your house not a place to scrimp. You want a really high quality fixture. This happens to be the Crew Touchless model. So it's got this really nice touchless feature on here. Super nice faucet. The sink is a single bowl cast iron. This happens to be the White Haven. And this is kind of related to my first tip. I really like single basin models with a single outlet. When you have a divided sink and you've got a disposal on one side and a non-disposal on the other, those can be prone to backup and issues, which could cause leaks or flooding. So by having a single hole, single outlet, that means I've got a disposal on there. I'm gonna grind up whatever might be caught in there and it's gonna go away. Much, much less backup potential. So big fan of Kohler. Quality fixtures is number one. Number two in my list, get a good plumber. <laughs> Plumbers are crucial. Don't have a handyman install your kitchen sink and your faucet. And all, you can see I've got a bunch of connections here. You really want a licensed and a, a really good, knowledgeable, wise plumber who's been around the block because those connections can be over-tightened and that can be a problem. You want everything done correctly. All right, let's get into the meat of it though. Number three, leak detection. I actually have a future video on several of these models. I'm trying to decide which is gonna be my final model. But anytime you've got a kitchen sink, I think a leak detector is a great way to go. Several of these are like in the $10 range. Some of them are more like $60. But either way, having one of these so that if you have a drip, you stop that leak before it becomes a flood. And it also, you're gonna stop it before it causes damage. Now the next tip, I really like these under sink mats. There's several manufacturers of these. This happens to be extreme mat. I know WeatherTech makes them as well. This one is the best fit for my specific cabinet. So that's why I went with this one. You want to try and get one that goes full edge to edge, front to back. This is going to give you a lip on there. So if you did have a little bit of a steady drip, it would catch it. And then your leak detector is going to alarm and tell you that you've got a problem. Okay, next up, when you're specifying your cabinetry, we've all seen those cabinets that are built out of MDF, uh, you know, not to pick on Ikea, but I've seen lots of ruined Ikea base cabinets because water leaked, that MDF blew up. You really wanna use plywood at a minimum at your entire kitchen sink base. These happen to be cabinets from crystal cabinets. In all of my cabinetry, no matter where it is in the house, is all real plywood. So it can take a little bit of water and we might mar the finish, but we're not gonna ruin the integrity of the cabinet. The last tip, where your angle stops come out of the wall, you can see I've got two angle stops right here from my hot and my cold lines. I really like quarter turn valves for all your angle stops. The kind that are the gate valves that seem to turn endlessly tend to have more of a problem over time than the quarter turn ball valves. You also wanna exercise those. It's a good idea about every six months or a year to turn those on and turn those off. Let's lubricate them, let's move them that way in the future, you're gonna not have that seizing issue where 10 years from now, if you needed to turn them on and off in an emergency, you wouldn't be able to. So exercise those valves. One of the things I wanted to mention about those angle stops is you're gonna notice those angle stops are pretty far out from the back of the cabinet. I told my plumber I wanted to cut the terminations on those as far out as possible. And I know that Upinar pipe 
isn't as pretty as maybe a copper stub out, but I purposely left them long so that in the future, if I needed to cut off that angle stop 20 years from now, if it was frozen or had a problem, I could cut it, I could get another PEX expander in there, expand that pipe, and put another fitting on. So by running that long, I figured that might give me another 100 years, let's say, or four or five cutoffs and adding additional stops without having to get into the wall to add another fitting. And lastly, I plumbed my house with PEX. I use specifically Upinor PEX, which is quite flexible. And a lot of times, plumbers want to put a copper bullet on the end of PEX. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically a transition between copper and the PEX lines in the wall so that the fitting they put on at the end is copper, or, or pardon me, mates to the copper, and it looks a little nicer. However, I'm a big function guy, and I'd much rather have a very functional system than a pretty system. So you can see I've got a PEX line coming out of the wall here and underneath all of my sinks. I purposely left that PEX line long, and the reason being is there's no, um, there's no fitting inside the wall. I've got a bend support, so that PEX as it comes out of the wall is bent straight out of the wall, and that a fitting goes on, which means I've got a fitting here, and my next fitting is not until way up in the ceiling when it comes off my racetrack design for my hot water circulation loop. So it's one less fitting for every single angle stop in my entire house, which means in my house where I've got three and a half baths, gosh, that's at least, uh, what is that, six, seven, eight, eight less fittings in the house. It's all about leak potential and reducing that risk. Guys, hopefully you learned something. I'll put a link to all the Kohler fixtures that I used here that I'm showing, uh, and also to some of the leak detectors, but stay tuned for that future video on those specific leak detectors and the differences between them that I found, and I'll tell you which one I decided to choose. And lastly, don't forget to find that link for the dishwasher drain pan and the washer and refridge pans. Very important to reduce that leak potential everywhere you've got a water appliance in the house. And the last thing I wanna mention, big thanks to Kohler for sponsoring today's video. This is a really nice brand. They are more expensive than some. There are some that are much more expensive. And funny enough, some of the really expensive brands are not made very well, but Kohler strikes a really good balance of the right price and really high quality. If you're on a budget and you can't afford it, consider reducing somewhere else. You know, cheaper light fixtures could be replaced and your light fixtures, you know, if they break in five years, they're not causing a flood or a problem. If something that's connected to your water line breaks or has a problem, you've got bigger problems. Flood damage and water damage in houses is billions in dollars a year to insurance companies and massive hassle and headaches to homeowners. So pay attention to those water details in your house and it's gonna make for a better build for you and a better build for your clients. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.